Gone fishing, gone away. Well, at least to Norfolk. begin their lives with a stream. Although this one over the years has become very badly silted due to all these trees which have probably been here some 60, 80 years. Lots of mare's tail here sticking up out of the water and the whole dike here is crammed full with thick cabbages. Oh, that's a whopping great big fungi. Don't like the look of that. Hello. It's a pretty mallard cross down here with all her ducklings. A lot of my gamekeeper friends reckon that the Mallard's Crossing ruins the strain, but I don't know, I think they're pretty little things. I don't know too much about this weather. It's been raining all night and the sun keeps dipping in and out. Let's hope we get a bit of sunshine later on because we're here for one of the smallest members of the carp family, the Crucian carp. Let's keep our fingers crossed. We're coming to the spot now where the stream widens out into the lake proper and although it's still very shallow because there's lots of thick beds of lilies here absolutely covering the surface some of the bigger carp the mirrors leathers and commons move in close under these very roots where i am now if the crucians are a bit uncooperative i think i'll have a go for them well all i've done is walk around the lake and all that lovely sunshine has disappeared it just shows you how quickly the weather here in norfolk changes this is a nice crucian swim. We're going to get quietly in here. Put the ground bait back in down. I don't like sitting on these wooden stages. It makes too much noise. I prefer to sit just to the left and use them as a bit of a platform. Right. Let's get the stall out. Hello. <laughs> is that family of mallard crosses they must have followed me all around the lake you know what i've got in here don't you my crucian ground bait i like to put it in little and often i've got a nice stiff mix in here so it should go straight the way down i'll probably get a bit off the top there we'll start off with a couple of Balls. One of the things about this lake, there's so many lovely ducks and geese, I think we're going to have them come and visit us all day long, but it doesn't matter. Right, let's get the rod set up. Here's my simple crucian ground bait. It's a mixture of fresh breadcrumbs and maize meal, and it's got some sweet corn in it. And to give it a little bit of added attraction, I've put in some salmon fry crumbs. And I normally put it in in small balls, just like that. Right, let's try a piece of bread flake. The duck seems to have left me alone for a minute. Nice thing about crucian carp fishing is you don't have to fish very far out. Just a couple of feet beyond the rod tip, as long as you're quiet and the water's coloured, which this lake is, the fish come in close to feed. As long as you keep the ground bait coming in throughout the day at regular and small intervals, small helpings rather. Hello, there's lots of little fish in this swim. That's one of the problems here, I'm not, I can't really fish as light as I'd like to, because if I use a very small hook and a single maggot or a small piece of bread flake, and I'd catch a six inch rod a cast, and that's not what we're really here for. There's lots of small ones as well. Probably last year's fish, about two inches long. And they're always pecking, forever pecking at the bait. The float's going there. There we go. Oh, missed it. That's another little rod, I think.
quite a few bubbles coming up here and there and the odd small fish scattering so I've got an idea there's quite a few small fish in the swim. There's, in this lake anyway there's a lot of small roach and rud and when you're fishing small baits for crucian these can be a bit of a nuisance. Obviously not to the match angler, he wants to catch a lot of small fish to make his weight up but for me I don't like catching lots of tiddlers. Of course as the crucian such a small fish and the delicate feeder with a very small mouth structure anyway, then I have to use fairly fine tackle. A little bit of surface tow here. Hello, twitch then. Oh, no, missed it. Probably small stuff. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Let's try another lump. The nice thing about crucian fishing, it's such close range, it's one finger of line and I'm out there, there's no heavy casting at all. I'll keep the rod tip low here because of this surface draw. I can't really sink the line and strike sideways as though I were true waggler fishing because I haven't really got enough distance between me and the float. And when I'm crucian fishing, because they're tilting down to suck up the bait, I do like to strike upwards rather sharply. I'm getting the odd tiny little twitch there. I've got a duck between my feet at the moment, nibbling my bread. The cheeky little mallards. Hello, here we go. Yes, we're in. Oh, no, it was a better fish. Oh, here we go. Yes, that's not a little one. Looks like something reasonable. Making a bit of a tail pattern. Feels like a crucian, but uh, I don't know, there's a lot of small mirrors in here. It could be a small mirror. <laughs> it's pulling the old rod tip. That's nice. No, it is a crucian. That's nice. It's a good start to the day. Come on, my beauty, in you come. That's lovely. Oh, that's nice. I wish the sun were out because I love this golden yellowy colour of the crucian. Oh, ah. Well, that's a chunky one. Oh, <laughs> careful, they're positively chunky crucians, aren't they? Look at this one. There we are. That's a pew. beautiful fish, look at that. Lovely buttery yellow colour. It's got that characteristic rounded dorsal fin of the crucian, whereas all other carps have got a spiked one and a much more rigid dorsal. And he's got this tiny little mouth, quite a delicate mouth for a carp, really. Look at that semi-protrusable so he has to stand on his head like that when he feeds and then he lifts up and that's when the float goes like that sometimes lovely little fish about a pound let's put him in the keep net <laughs> hello you're not afraid are you you're not really afraid come on you better have it here it's better here than in the water you little devils The nice thing about crucian fishing is that they normally send up lots of bubbles and up until a few minutes ago there were quite a few coming up but uh, well there's one there now. Yeah, yes here we are, it's another crucian. It was a gentle bite wasn't it? I was just going to tighten that float down a little bit more then and uh, bang, we're in again. It's taken a few minutes but the crucians really do seem to be on that sweet corn now. This is going well, it's another nice, aren't they lovely fish? Look at them. <laughs> they suddenly stop as though, I've had enough. I'm yours. Here we go. Lovely. Oh, check on the reel there so I don't overrun. There he is. <laughs> Whoops. There you are. He's picked up a bit of cabbage there. Stumpy little one, isn't he? Whoops, let's take the hook out. Whoop, hold on there, hold on there. Careful. There we are. Right, let's put him in the net. 
Ooh. Ooh. Now, a lot of anglers, when they're fishing, they like pictures of their catch, and, and if you're like me and you fish by yourself, it's not easy, but with my little setup, you can take foolproof pictures of your catch quite easily. What I've got here, I've got a bulb release leading round to where I'm going to put the camera. That's on a box so that when I press the bulb, which fires the shutter, that isn't seen and it's nice and stiffly positioned there. Um, I've got my camera here, which takes a little tiny special thread adapter. You can get this from any tackle shop and it's got a bank stick thread in the bottom end and a camera thread in this end. Your bank stick just goes on like that quite easily. I've already set up the camera exposure-wise, etc. And so that I know I'm in the frame, lay that down so it doesn't fall in, I've got a, a small stick here positioned just above where I'm going to hold the fish. And so long as I hold the fish just over this stick, which will be out of the camera frame when I position the camera, everything will be in focus because I shall focus on that there. And behind me here is a bank stick so that I know my head's in. I've got a couple of fish, two nice crucians there in the net, all ready to be photographed, so there's no having them flapping about on the bank and panicking and running back to a self-time or anything like this. Doing it this way, you can take your time and set it up. Right, we're going to put the camera in now. Now, let's have a look. What I want to do, I want to cut off the bottom stick just, or just get it in, and I want to just get in the the end stick there, that's perfect. Right, let's push it in the ground there. Final check. Yep. Focus up. Just focusing on the bottom, the top of the bottom cane. Right. Oh, now this screws into the side of the shutter. Just like that. That's fine. Final check. Make sure I haven't taken that out of frame. That's lovely. All we do, we go back, get in position, and I'm going to put my foot on the bulb there when I lean over, just like that. Right, let's get the fish out. One thing you must always remember, to take that out first. Right. Whoops, careful, careful. These are nice fish. The thing about holding fish, if you want people to see them, is holding them nicely. Don't have a lot of mud on you like that. Just hold those pair like that. Move the landing out of the way. And I'm over position now. You can take your time, don't panic. I'm over the stick, so I know these have got to be in focus because they're directly over it. And I've got the stick like that. My foot's over the, the bulb release. Say cheese for the camera, Wilson. Cheers. <laughs> this is no crucian, that's for sure. Oh, I have to be very, oh it's a, it's a, it must be a mirror. It's really going. It's, trying to make it into those cabbages out in the middle there. Oh, this is a trouble on a two pound line. You'd... Oh, that is a good fish. You've got to be so careful. <laughs> careful, Wilson, careful. With bigger carp, I like to have a really hard fight on heavier tackle, this sort of light stuff. You've got to be so careful. Come on. There's a patch of lilies there, I'm gonna have to be careful it doesn't make that. Oh no. They like doing these last minute swimmers roll straight in the lilies. There's a lot of cabbages beneath these here. Come on. No, I think I might get this in if I play it carefully. He's certainly tiring, but this is where you haven't got any power on light tackle close in and they, they tend to wallow about a bit under the rod tip. No, I think he might might just be no he isn't. Yes he is. Oh. No. He's... No, he's not ready yet. 
Well, I shouldn't have shown you the net so quickly, then. Come on. Oh, oh. <laughs> Just turned in from those lilies. Power's incredible, really. A two pound line, though, if you keep steady pressure on it, it's surprising what you can do. Just hope that size 14 hook holds. No, he's off again. Come on, if I can just get his head up now. Yes, we've got him. <laughs> that was a good fight, better than those crochets. Oh, that is a pretty fish. Oh, that's a nice mirror. That's one of those starburst ones where you've got lots of little tiny scales. Beautiful reflection on lots of those. He's lost an odd scale off there. Right, let's unhook him with the forceps. Fourteen hooks just in there, look at that, amazing. Right. Now, I'll never put mirror carp in keep nets or any commons, leathers or any of the, the bigger carps because they've got a spike first dorsal in there. And if you put them in the keep net, that gets all caught up and uh, it just marks them. It's a lovely looking fish, isn't it? Let's put him straight back in. Ooh, there you go. Oh, God. Soak me. <laughs> Some most unusual smells walking through this wet pathway here. Every now and again I get a distinct sniff of, I don't know, it could be rabbit or stoat or something. It's, it's quite nice, really. This is a funny spot because within feet of me I've got massive beds of sedges. You've got to be careful you don't cut your hands on those. And reed mace with those lovely big brown cigar-shaped seed heads. And yet the lake is 50 yards from me. It just shows you how the land here over silting 60, 70 years has reclaimed its own. It's a pity these recent rains have flattened all the wildflowers because there's a hell of a lot of stuff along here. This, I think, they call meadow sweet. That's lovely. Now that we're around this end of the lake, hoping to get some carp out of these tough lilies here, I'm going to get in the water and see what it's really like down there. OK, I've got my wetsuit on and my bagging hook. Let's have a look at these lilies. I don't actually make a habit of hacking up lily beds, but this particular part of the lake is going to be dredged in a, in a couple of weeks' time. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's a bit of a shock. It's a bit squelchy here. And so I don't really think it's going to matter if I have a look at a few of these. I feel like a baby hit a hippopotamus here. Right, let's have a look. Oh, put me knife down. Oh, well, here we are. Look, this is why carp like it down this end of the lake. Years and years and years of accumulated silt. It's horrible, it's smelly, it's black, but it's full of little goodies like snails and loads of bloodworms. I can see two or three there. It's what the carp adore, and they spend hours sucking them out of this silt. God, look at it. It's terrible. Right. Let's have a look at some lily roots. Ooh. Oh, There's a real mixture of lilies down this end of the lake. This is the uh, common yellow water lily called Nufalutia. That's one of the little tight yellow flowers there that hasn't come out. This particular lily's got massive great big green pads, but it's also got these subsurface pads, which a lot of anglers call cabbage. And if you see thick pads of cabbage, there's often tension carp lingering close by. The actual rhizome itself is massive underneath the, the uh, bottom of the silt. Here's a, a big chunk. They're actually that large, and some of them are thicker than my leg. And it creates this massive superstructure under the water. And if you get a carp go underneath it, it's curtained. So you've got to keep your rod really well up when you get a carp that goes plowing through these. The Swedes, actually, used to make bread from these rhizomes. Used to powder it down and... Uh, make loaves. I don't know whether I fancy it. There's also some cultivated lilies here. There's a lot of white lilies in this lake. There's probably two or three different types. The original white water lily, Nymphia alba, is quite rare these days. This is one of the, the hybrids. This has got a different root stock. It's got a, got a quite a chunky rhizome there, but it's got lots of, of these sucker roots 
that feed it, that come off it. And then from the top, you see you've got many more stems and flowers and pads than the, the uh, common water lily. There's a funny story about lilies, really. Um, a guy called, a Frenchman called Joseph the Tourmaliac in the 1800s, I think 1860 onwards, decided to hybridise a lot of water lilies and he used the original Nymphia alba, which is quite rare, to hybridise with lilies from all over the world to create these hardy hybrids and this is one of them. I think this is Nymphia carnea. It's got a, you can see that, it's got a quite a, a pinky flush to the edge of the flowers. There we are. And of course, when you're playing fish near this particular lily, the rhizomes are right down on the floor of the lake uh, and the carp doesn't go through them. But you've still got to be quite wary of the, when it goes through the pads itself. Right, here we are. This is difficult here. I think I'm going to have to leave the net on these logs. Right, let's have a look. This water's so shallow. You can see one or two fish moving out there now. It's probably no more than a foot or so deep. Yeah, there's one bow wave. There's some twigs sticking up out of the water there. Right, the nice thing about these sort of swims is that you can fish them on ordinary baits. And what I've done, I've left my tackle bag back there and I've a couple of slices of bread and some luncheon meat in my back pocket. Got a loose 10 pin controller float on the the line then stopped about three foot from a swivel. I'm going to use a bit of bread flake. A lot of carp anglers would sneer at that, but then let's just dunk it, see if it's definitely going to sink, yeah. But uh, nobody bothers to fish in these little reed beds where these thick lilies are, so the carp have got no reason to be suspicious of bread flake. Right, let's try and whack that out. That gap over there. Look at that clutch again, if I could fish here, this is really going to be hit, wind and hold stuff. And as I can just see a lily pad moving to my left there. I would have liked that more in a clearing, but just in between some pads there. Fortunately, there's not too much breeze, so the, the line's not drifting. The float probably won't go under, but the line will zing along the surface. I'm just merely using the the weight of the float to get the lump of bread flake out there. Very difficult to judge the size of the fish here when they move through those lilies. Just keep down a bit. It's better. It's not easy to judge their size at all because the weather being dull, they're not going to waddle through the silt with their backs out of the water. They're just making slight tail patterns and little furrows. I can just see them all water moving above them. It's really going to erupt if I do hit one. Come on. Yes! Oh, this is a good fish. <laughs> Keep him out of those lilies, Wilson. Yes! God! Keep the rod up here. Go! Oh, he's out of the lilies. Oh. <laughs> but we were a goner there. That's, you've got to be so careful with those lilies. You just can't let them get their heads down. Oh, it's not as big as I thought. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Thinks it's a marlin, I think. No, he's not. He's not bad. He's not bad. Oh. Oh, right. Yeah, he's rolled. He's ready for the net. Go. <laughs> gotcha. Oh. Whew. That was a scrappy fight. Right. Let's have a look at him. Oh. 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 The size of that propeller. Oh, let's see where the hook is. Oh, it's come out in there. Oh, let's hold you up and have a look at you. Stop grunting at me. <laughs> That's a nice looking fish. He's sort of half mirror and half leather. 
Well, I know we came for Crucians and we caught them, but I don't know, somehow it's rather nice to finish the day on the mirror, isn't it?